Welcome to uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 22, Thoughts. This episode is called Beginning of the End. You know, a few episodes back we had The End of the Beginning. Another episode I love. Spoilers for everything MCU leading up to, including this episode. No spoilers for anything MCU that first premiered after this episode first aired. The top link in the description box will enable you to donate to the SAG After Strikers. And I'm pleased to do so. And then there's some links to videos to help explain why this is such an important strike. The writers have gotten what they were asking for, but the actors have not yet. So please keep supporting them. And you know, I have high hopes, but we'll we'll see. And yeah, let's get into the video. So. Uh, yeah, so we we start with this guy who's like it's you know it's his first day at the you know and and he's told you know oh this is this is actually good for you to see on on your first day you know and he says he couldn't turn down the incentives to which the response is we haven't met anyone who can and you know that is of course you know we we. There are a number of companies that do offer some incentives and where, like, you know, if it's, like, employer-paid health care, you might literally, you know, in, in certain countries, including America, you might need that. It's, you know, but we learn later, no, the incentives is that they kidnap someone you care about and keep them prisoner, threatening to hurt them if you you know step out of line and yeah that is you know there are some extremely evil people who have used that in order to secure people's allegiance and yeah you know fascists do use intimidation and threats to get what they want and yeah um, very cool fight scene as the, you know, yeah, Coulson and May get back out of the, the, the basement of the, the barber shop. And it is really good, you know. So, where do I get, you know, and was it any, any tip on where I can get that haircut or something like, you know, like he just, you know, what, what, this is, this is still a barber shop, isn't it? I came to get my haircut. And now I'm surrounded by these, you know, soldiers. I, I don't know what's going on here. Look, could you just cut my hair? I have places to be, you know. And May manages to grab the the staff, which, you know, yeah, of course that is the the what's the word? Of course they they managed to, you know, given that Shield had been infiltrated by Hydra, that staff which we thought was going to end up with S.H.I.E.L.D., ended up with HYDRA, and, yeah, she kicks ass with it, you know, again, as she did the, yeah, and, let's see, I think, right, and, and really love the thing, you know, let's bring the house down. And, yeah, we see that Garrett isn't just alive, and now he has the super strength the the extremist super strength and the the you know that that Mike also has for example you know b before we were told yeah he got that serum but it was only just you know he was so far gone it was just enough to keep him alive but now with the was it GH three twenty five yeah he's you know he now has the super strength and he starts talking just complete nonsense so um, you know so yeah and yeah ward is like trying to talk him down it is not super successful you know he's like okay so i mean hydra that was just a means to an end we were just looking to keep you alive right so we're not actually gonna do a coup are we and he's like oh no no it's it's gonna be a revolution you know just, okay that was not the response that Ward was hoping for and Raina completely snitches on you know goes and says so Ward thinks you're losing your mind also it was totally him who ate Julie's yogurt out of the fridge even though it has her name right there just 
you know, I I don't work in an office like that. I work in an office where people are nice to each other, but I do hear that a lot of offices have the, the office snitch, so that's kind of Reyna's role here. Let's see. And, yeah, we see, you know, Fitzsimmons did indeed survive, but it is this thing of, you know, for how long? And I, I quite like this thing of, you know, Fitz, you know, oh, I spent an hour on, you know, getting this, this signal to go out, and then I realized, I mean, it's the shield. You know, no, no one's still monitoring the shield um, frequencies, you know, and then later we hear, oh, yeah, Fury was, you know, and, yeah, it's, it make, makes perfect sense, and... Yeah, he did survive the movie, so now he's back. He's still trying to keep it hidden that he survived, but yeah. And... Yeah, you know, Reyna explains, you know, she was disappointed when she found out that uh, he wasn't clairvoyant. He still has, she still has the, the question for him to answer, what will I become? I really appreciate that the, like... She has like a belief system. She there's there's stuff driving her. She's not just like ha evil for the sake of being evil. She is evil. She does incredibly evil things, but there's a reason behind it, and I really appreciate that. It makes her so much more interesting. And you know, the medium of comic books have sometimes, not entirely unfairly, you know, had a reputation for having very one-note villains, so I appreciate this effort to have her rise above that. And, yeah, so Gemma is scared, Fitz is scared and hungry. No wonder he's still hungry. Ward never did tell him where they kept the snacks, and he just hung up on him. I swear, someone uh, working on the show really likes the idea that Fitz is just like, he he asks about food. I I believe this is at least the third time, which you know. So on an average of every seven episodes, he has to bring up that he's hungry, which you know it's it's obviously it's this thing. You know, Ward is like you know he can go by without food for for you know thirty months straight. You know, he man kind of type. So fits you know being the yeah, he's used to having snacks around. He's not used to really leaving the lab. Let's see. And... Yeah, and, and you know, Gemma talks about the, the first law of thermo thermodynamics. And, yeah, you know, it is... You know, if you can find comfort in, you know, the the... Yeah, you know, maybe you'll, you know, when you die, you will, you, in your life, you gave life to a lot of other beings, you know, yeah. And that really, it's a very, it's a very healthy response to this seemingly hopeless situation. And then we see, you know, they, they stop to realize, oh wait, there's a solution, you know, the, the glass is made of this, this, and this. We can, you know, blow out the glass using the thing and just, yeah. I really enjoyed Coulson and Triplet getting a Humvee with the really corny, you know, recording the the yeah the, the spy thing and Trip just being so confident, very very cool. You know, did you bring the noisemaker? I always bring the noise and the funk wherever I go. And, yeah, you know, they get the Humvee, and then they smash through the gate at Cybertech. Cyber... Whatever, you know. And and the then the, the soldiers come up and start punching the glass. Let's see. But, but you know, um, Coulson points a gun at one, and, you know, like, oh, we have to protect Garrett, so you know, Coulson can follow the soldiers to Garrett. And Garrett, like, Ian was, like, doing decent in, in like, sealing the deal. 
and then the gunfire starts and he's like you know it's just it's a very unfortunate training exercise there's no problem here you really shouldn't worry and then in comes Garrett and like you know just starts threatening the guy and and all the you know this is your you know what was it strategic analyst he's part time <laughs> and Garrett like you know plunges his hand into you know Glenn Morshauer who just has rotten luck playing generals in Marvel movies you know he does a great performance but it doesn't necessarily end well for him and yeah just you know rips part of him out and then stabs him with the the part that he rips out you know and yeah it's, it's i i quite appreciate the reference you know it's interesting seeing bill paxton on the other side of that situation and you know i mean that has to be a reference to terminator 1 just 100% and and yes i realize that wasn't well let's see it's been a while since i watched was that Paxton or was Paxton the one because see he Paxton isn't the one who survives and takes his jacket off that's definitely someone else I'm not 100% certain if Paxton was the one who got like shoved away and died from that or if he was the guy yeah you know maybe he was maybe he wasn't and you know 50-50 and yeah I like you know Ward points out to Reyna, you know, Sky thinks I'm a monster, and she says, well, maybe you could be monsters together. And, yeah, Sky, very badass, walking in and just taking control of the situation. Right, and then we see the, the default directive thing, and there's also, tell me you didn't set it to default directive. Yeah, just, that was, that was pretty funny. And it is, you know, we saw earlier, um... Kyle Zeller doesn't really know what to do in a crisis. You know, he screwed up at the start of the episode as well. So, yeah, him screwing up here at the, you know, mid midpoint or so. Yeah, it's just, you know, he's not the best at this, you know. And, yeah, so Fitzsimmons have their, their plan, but it's this thing, you know, only one of them can get the the oxygen and then we have the trope of um, character confessing their undying love for a character right before they they themselves die or they think they'll die yeah I'm not a big fan of this trope it's you know I get that it's obvious you know it's dramatic it's it can really get to you emotionally but it's just this thing of, and, and I get, you know, oh, you know, I couldn't bear dying without you knowing how I feel. But what's the other person supposed to do with that? You know, if you're not going to be together, you know, so, so yeah, not the biggest fan. But Fitz did survive, so maybe they'll make, maybe they'll manage to do something really cool with that. So I'm hoping that in the, in, yeah, future episodes. And yeah, you know, they, they manage to get to the the top and Fury saves them. We see the truth of the incentives program. And I don't really love the woman scorned trope, but I will say it was kind of funny when, you know, like Sky is is like talking tough to, to Ward and Ward's like you know I th let's see, I think it was like, uh, yeah, bomb, because at this point people still think that Sky is holding a bomb. Uh, later we see, you know, it's the, uh, she hacked so that she could monitor and communicate with Mike, you know, and yeah, Ward is like, you really think a bomb is going to, you know, and she's like, oh, I've got something more powerful than a bomb, uh, you know, and you pissed her off. And I, I quite appreciate, you know, that the Fury did not show up empty-handed to, to Coulson. You know, he hands him the weapon, and they have, you know, an exchange that follows up on, you know, 
in the let's see yeah in you know with with Loki before he fires he says even I don't know what it does you know then after firing it he says so that's what it does and then in this episode Fury says this packs a pretty good punch and Coulson says I know what it does it's, yeah very nicely done and yeah um the the on more than one occasion in the fight scene between May and Ward which is also just like you know we've been waiting for this ever since Ward was revealed to be Hydra you know there's no way this is an American show there it's mainstream there's no way that the season is gonna end without a big fight between him and one of the you know one of the non Hydra agents of our team and of course it's gonna be May you know she's the by far I suppose it could have been trip but it wouldn't have meant as much but yeah we've been waiting for this and they really did deliver you know this is this is like the end of alias season two level epic fight scene between two characters that we've been waiting to see fight if you know you know and the the yeah at one point like one of them grabs one of those um uh, what do they call again Mecha mechanical saws uh, whatever and and tries to attack the other with and you know at another point Ward puts May on a table and tries to push her towards one of those saws that's you know built into the table and just yeah and I will say the line you were never on top yeah I don't the the this whole thing of like oh the person on top is like winning sex I don't really love that but I you know I don't know the delivery I think was good <laughs> and Garrett points out when has anybody ever seen a tag team made up of four dead guys and Coulson follows up by saying I only see one dead guy <laughs> so corny and yeah the May manages to to use a nail gun to get Ward stuck to the the floor and then like kicks him and punches him and the, the wait wait I've been waiting long enough for this and you know spin kick very cool and yeah you know at the start of the episode we were told oh there's construction next door you know so yeah they they went through uh, a wooden wall into next door where they're doing construction they're expanding and so there's a bunch of tools around really love that setup like that's that's the kind of thing you know the moment that they broke that in the writers room I hope they were high-fiving because they deserve it that was a fantastic setup for a fight scene and yeah we see you know ace freed from the cell and I like the thing with you know Fury says I I said part of something bigger not you yourself or something. I, I'm sorry, did you not did you understand the Colson? Colson's like, I understood it fine, just you know. And yeah, you know, Sky asks Ace, what is something that will tell your father that you that that it's you communicating with him? What would only the two of you know about? And it's the we're a team bit, which yeah, you know, one of the first things we learned about them so yeah that was really really great and yeah they managed to to take out you know and and Mike has been waiting for this takes out Garrett which again like I feel like that is you know he's the one who's been hurt the most by Garrett so it makes sense for it to be him that takes out yeah and you know May explains of Ward can't speak. I believe I broke his jaw. Oh god, my Australians know better than my Irish, is it? And yeah, you know, Sky says you could be with your son again, and Mike says, you know, I don't want him to see what I've become, and he's not talking about the burns. You know, he's saying 
the things I've done and the the toll that carries on me psychologically. And yeah, you know, he says you can watch my every move. You know, you're, uh, you know, yeah. Keep looking. I'm not gonna do anything that's wrong. I'll just be making amends. Or will he be avenging? I guess we'll maybe see. And the post credits. Garrett survived and gets the robot body and says, you know, this is why they say it's the head that's cut off. And the, the, let's, oh, wait, no, sorry, yeah, this is not the post credit yet. Anyway, yeah, and, you know, is, and, and he starts to do the big villain, you know, monologue or, or cackling, maniacal laugh. And then, you know, Coulson just, destroys him with the with the gun and then he says I told you guys it was in here which is of course why he was still there he went in there to look for the the beam gun thing and yeah you know fury I, I appreciate that fury and Colson had a conversation and fury wasn't like you know right right from the start like fury says you know you deserve us having that conversation you know and yeah he doesn't try to shut colson down when colson you know points out how cruel it was ultimately colson does accept it which i feel again is this sort of patronizing patriarchal you know the government will take care of you don't worry if they're doing something that you realize is cruel it'll work out in the end kind of thing which yeah still not a fan of and yeah and and then they you know Col ah, fury says you know i want you to rebuild shield and yeah simmons is in front of the the plane but Fitz isn't, and she says, you know, he's alive, barely. And we meet Billy Koenig, who, you know, looks just like Eric Koenig, and runs the playground, and, you know, he has the same, like, geeking out at Coulson, and being, you know, somewhat, like, reticent with the rest of the team. And, yeah, this was a very strong season ender, you know, yeah, like, I, I'm very excited to see them trying to rebuild S.H.I.E.L.D. And, right, I, somehow I forgot to bring up in the, when I talked about the, the previous episode, Ragtag, Roxanne Dawson directed and did an amazing job again. I'm really glad that on at least some of these Star Trek shows, they the some of the actors got to direct because they've several of them have turned out to be very very talented directors. And yeah, and we we end with the yeah this one has two post credits uh, scenes. Uh, you know, um, Reina goes up to someone and says, "I found your daughter." And you see, like, fresh blood on this individual's hands, which, yeah, that's... Somehow I get the feeling that this person isn't, like, a surgeon who just, you know, didn't bother washing their hands properly. And I guess it doesn't wear surgical gloves. Somehow I get the feeling that that blood is not from someone who was super happy for this to to happen and yeah you know it again like it fits with what Reina has said and done up to this point you know she she wants to see how this goes kind of thing she, you know she sets things in motion and watches and waits and the very very end is Coulson cutting into wall you know, some, yeah, something that he feels he understands the same way we saw Garrett do. Or rather, the, the you know, 
set designers spent forever cutting into it, and then a bunch of people watched it and gave Phil Coulson credit when really he cut very little. I'm kidding. Um, the yeah, so there's some I'm to be trivia for this episode. Ming Wen said it took 17 hours to shoot her fight scene with Brett Dalton. I can see that. There's a lot to it. And yeah, the outfit Fury wears is exactly the same outfit he's seen wearing in the last scene of Captain America 2. Sunglasses, a beanie, a leather jacket, a hoodie instead of his usual eye patch and trench coat. And the let's see. Yeah. Uh yeah, that is it for Right, let's see, were there um, were there good quotes that let's see. Yeah, yeah, just as, you know, just before Garrett is killed, he's started, you know, he starts to say, now I'll be unstoppable, but, yeah, vaporized by Coulson, and, And I do, you know, the the you know they they make some jokes, you know, in the in the scene where apparently, you know, Garrett misunderstood the one man speech, but yeah, it is also you know, a lot of evil people have thought, you know, that that they themselves were more important than other people, so. Yeah, and, you know, ideally you want people who work together and who, you know, realize, you know, yeah, you can be part of something bigger. And... Let's see... Yeah, that is it. For... Right, and and I do appreciate you know the the I don't love when like the villain is like a crazy guy because it you know there's a lot of people who think that people with mental health issues are more likely to be danger dangerous and violent when it's actually you know we we know you know, those of us who look into it know that you're actually, people with mental health issues are more likely to, yeah, to be attacked than to be the attacker. I, you know, I appreciate that it's, it's like, it's a trope, they, they gotta do the thing, and I do think the, you know, Fury and Coulson playing off each other, making fun of it, you know, they they did do a, a a good job on the you know making yeah. Oops, and let's see. Yeah, um, you know the first law of thermodynamics says every part of us now was once a part of some other thing. A moon, a storm cloud, a mammoth, a monkey. We gave them new life. Good one, I hope.